Hello, it's Sarah from Heart Over Hearts, and I'm here today to do the 2019 Mid-Year Freakout Tag. Uh, so this is a tag that was created a long time ago. I think it's been going around every single year. And uh, I was tagged by Juan at Just One Reader. I'll include his link below. Uh, so I have to say I'm not really freaking out because I've had a pretty phenomenal reading year. So really pleased. Uh, so let's talk about it. Uh, the first question is, what has been the best book that you've read so far uh, this year? So I would have to say without a doubt. Uh, for me, it was The Milkman, which I did as a combo audio and, and a physical book. Uh, I think that this absolutely deserves The Man Booker. I think it's a phenomenal book has so many layers, so much to think about, so much to talk about, and the character is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, so, yes, to Milkman. The best sequel that I read, I read a manga book that blew me away. It was called uh, My Brother's Husband by Gengoro Tagami. And um, the first the setup for the for the manga is that there's a man um, a man and his daughter, young daughter. Um, he's separated from his wife, and they live alone. And they uh, they all of a sudden get a surprise visitor one day, and the visitor is his brother's husband, his twin brother's husband. And so immediately you realize that the family has been estranged, uh, and. Obviously, uh, his brother was gay, and the his brother's husband is from Canada, and so he's this big, uh, burly man uh, showing up uh, with a big beard and just this big hulk of a guy showing up in, in Japan, and there's all these cultural um, comedy of manners that happen, uh, and awkwardness and all of that, but in the first book, and a little bit about the, the background, uh, but the second book is really when your heart unlocks, and it just becomes this beautiful uh, revelation of, of family, and what family means, and and love and and you get to see the daughter and the brother-in-law their special relationship that they're able to create and the twin brother coming to terms with the death of his brother as well as his in it, the homophobia that he had carried and the estrange what led to the estrangement beautiful beautiful uh, series I highly recommend it uh, next up the question is what new release uh, or haven't you read yet? I don't really know how to answer that because I just feel like I'm always catching up on new releases. Uh, there's so many. I don't want this to be a 90 minute video. So I'm going to kind of skip over that one because uh, I'm always on the lookout for um, replenishing my my current and, and uh, ever expanding backlog of, of things that have just come out that I need to read. Next up, number four, what's your most anticipated read for the next part of the year? Um, I'm really looking forward to the Louise Penny uh, series uh, release that's coming up, I think, in October. I'll have to look. Um, but she does this a great, this just phenomenal series with Inspector Gamache and the Three Pines uh, setting. And this is in Canada. It's a small little town outside Montreal that's kind of not on a map and quirky characters, but really a lot of depth, very literary, uh, a lot of heart. It's a great series, except for uh, number 10, The Long Walk Home, was horrible. Horrible. But everything else has been, been fantastic. And she keeps kind of upping the ante. So I really love her, her stories and she's kind of an auto read for me. Uh, next up, what was your biggest disappointment? For me, it was uh, Black Leopard, Red Wolf by Marlon James. I was a huge fan of A Brief Life of Seven, A Brief History of Seven Killings uh, that he had done about the assassination attempt of Bob Marley. And what I loved about that book was the political and social implications that ran as a really strong current underneath um, what was perceived to be, you know, the the singer and Bob Marley and all of that. Uh, and that grounded me and kept me going. And so the, the violence 
while it didn't have purpose, it had context, context. Whereas this is just this gory, um, for me, it was just a gory science fiction, um, kind of fantasy romp. I didn't like the character, didn't, couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. Um, just didn't want the violence. And so I, I just had to drop it. Um, biggest surprise. So I think the biggest surprise for me this year was Women Talking by Miriam T Taves. Uh, this was fantastic. If you told me that I wanted, that I was going to love a book about Mennonite community that had suffered a, a trauma, I would have told you you were insane uh, because it's not, I don't, I tend to shy away from uh, religious text or heavily religious infused um, books but this was fantastic and I don't think it was too heavily uh, infused I think it was very good so that was a big surprise uh, the next up was new favorite author Jane Harper 100% thank you to Ozzy April for introducing me to Jane Harper because I think she's uh, really become one of my favorite new authors along with Tana French and Louise Penny in terms of uh, series writer that I can just dive right into and know that I'm in good hands. Uh, she writes uh, an evocative sense of place. Her pacing is phenomenal. She writes about Australia and usually her books are in the, set in the outback. And I just find her phenomenal, very readable. Uh, she's kind of an auto read for me now. The next up is uh, your newest fictional crush. It's so sweet that I don't do that anymore. <laughs> I, I just don't have crushes on on uh, fictional characters anymore. Um, I, I, you know, I remember those days, but no, no longer. Um, but I will say for the next one, which is your newest favorite character, would have to be there's two. One is Patricia Westerford, and this is from the Overstory by Richard Powers. Her storyline of of inner knowledge and solitude and um, perseverance and questioning and doubt um, and discovery is just so beautiful, so beautiful. And I, I just oh, I love her character. Uh, and then the other character that I absolutely adored was Kaya from Where the Crawdads Sing. I think she is going to be up there for um, Southern female uh, protagonist through the years. I think she's a she's a great uh, a great uh, up there with Scout as a from To Kill a Mockingbird as amazing young girl characters. A book that made you cry. Um, I don't think I've had a book that's made me cry this year. I do know that um, I, this one kind of made my heart sore, and a lot of times I cry when um, when I feel overwhelmed. Those surging emotions of of connection and beauty. Um, so I think closest I came was the Overstory, uh, for sure. Uh, books that made me happy. Um, I think the there was a book, it's a middle grade book, and I don't read a lot of middle grade, but it's called One Crazy Summer by Rita Williams Garcia. And it's set in Oakland. And uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful story about these girls that come to stay with their mother, who's a radical with the Black Panthers in the, I think it's set in the 70s, 60s and 70s. And it is just Oh, it's such a great book. I, I, I think it's it made me very happy. Um, a lot of depth and a lot of a lot of serious issues um, that were brought up in it. So I was really pleased to know that a book like that exists in the world. Next is um, favorite film uh, book to film adaptation, and I haven't done I haven't seen anything yet that that fits that mark. But it gives me an opportunity to plug the um, read-along that, that Juan, just Juan from Just One Reader and I are going to be doing for The Goldfinch, which comes out September 13th. Uh, I think I said 14th in the video, but it comes out the 13th, and we're going to be finishing the read-along on the 12th, so just in time to see it. Uh, he and I have been um, ooh, ogling and, and ooing and eyeing over the trailer, so we think it could be a really good, a good opportunity and a great read, so fingers crossed on that one. 
Um, favorite read review you've done? Um, I'm really proud of, of, Milk, of the review I did for the Milkman. Uh, so I'll link that one below. And then most beautiful book from the year. I think for me it was Lion Cross Point. And this is by Masazugo Ono. And it's just absolutely stunning. It takes my breath away every single time I see it. And then last, um, the, what books do I need to read by the end of the year? I don't tend to think that I have to read anything. Um, that's when I get myself in a trap. So for me, um, it's what do I want to read? What am I interested in? And, and uh, I guess the same as, as what new release haven't I read yet. Um, to me, it's, it's endless possibilities. So uh, I'm excited by them all and I want to read them all, but need to. Mm -mm. No, that's not, not how I, I think about my reading. But um, anyway, that's it for me. Um, thank you so much for the tag one. And I will welcome anybody to, who wants to do this. You consider yourself invited to do the tag. I look forward to seeing your answers. Hope you're also not freaking out about your mid-year uh, mid of, of books. Thank you so much and talk to you later. Bye.